Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. The West End Church of Christ also has a website. On this website you can gain access to any lesson that's brought from the pulpit. You can do this by going to the menu on the website, selecting resources, and from resources you can select sermons and you can actually search for any specific lesson or you can browse through the lessons. Also on this website you can gain access to the More Bible Talk lesson that is broadcast live Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. and on Sunday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. You can listen live by clicking on the link from the More Bible Talk applet. Also, if you desire, you can also listen to More Bible Talk on the radio station WLLV, that's 1240 on the AM dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. No tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flow. No tears in heaven, there. no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where we shall see. Tears of joy. 
but it will be a joyous occasion. Amen. So let us continue to give God thanks for all that he has done. And on this morning, I would like to, to talk to you in reference to what has to happen to get your attention. Now, back in 2017, if you all can remember back that far, I preached this lesson, and as Anita would tell me I can preach it today and go somewhere tomorrow and preach it. The verses may be the same, but some of the explanation may be a little bit different. But it all means the same thing. Trying to get us to understand what God would have us to do and for us to do those things. Man. So what has to happen? to get our attention. Now, I, I can stand here, and I can't do it this morning, but yesterday I could have, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I can stand here and yell at the top of my lungs. And some of you all will still ignore me, but I can walk to the edge of this platform up here and I can fall flat on my face. And some of y'all will run to my aid, and some others will sit back and laugh and say certain things about me. <laughs> I'm not going to venture off into those things in which you will say, but I can imagine and you can imagine what will be said. But there are things that happen that we pay more attention to than when this happens. And we just, again, we ignore it. Now, I'm going to list a couple of things in reference to things that may get our attention. First, a car crashing into your home. Well, now I don't know about any of you, but on some Sundays, Sunday afternoons in particular, I like to get a nap. Well, I was laying on the couch one Sunday evening and or the afternoon and heard this crash. The car didn't crash into our home, but two doors down, a, a car crashed into that house. And I jumped up and, and ran out there, and I had put on my soft clothes, what we call it. <laughs> and Nina came outside, and she said, I know you're not out here in your pajamas. <laughs> I just wanted to see what was happening. It had got my attention, and she did as well. So I had to go back in the house. But... What about your child being hit by a tree? Mm -hmm. Hit by a tree, not, not a car, not a bus, not a bike, mm -hmm. not a baseball bat, but a tree. This has happened, a child was hit by a tree around about the time I decided to put this lesson together, that happened. Tree fell and hit the child. Mm -hmm. I bet you got somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. what, what, what were, what, why was that child there alone? You know, the question may be asked. It didn't only get the attention of the parents, but it got the attention of, of those others that were concerned about that child, the health and welfare of that child. Mm -hmm. What about a fire destroying all you have? Well, would that get your attention? Mm -hmm. You know, because we, we own some stuff, don't we? Amen. And we don't want to lose it, especially to a fire. Amen. But would that get your attention? Mm -hmm. I want you to think about these things because these things are happening, have happened. A game jumping on your child. Man called up to the school one day and he was he was irate because his child had had, had, had accused him of, of abusing him. The child had, you know, bumps and bruises on him, knots. And he wanted to explain to us that I didn't do that to my child. And we explained to him, we believe you. Mm -hmm. And we know who did it to your child. It was a game. And he was concerned about that. It, it not only got his attention because of what his child said he had done, but it got the attention of the social services mm -hmm. and the school. 
See, we, we do some things sometimes to, to bring attention to ourselves. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. But again, jumping on your child, what does that get your attention and let you realize and, and you understand that, yes, our schools were filled, and I, I say filled with gang members. I said, no, not my child's school. Yes, your child's school. Mm-hmm. You may not know the signs. You may want to ask somebody. Don't ask your child because he or she is going to lie to you. But read up on it, and you'll find that, yes, our children, our, our child, our little children get jumped on by gang members because they want them to be a part of their family. What about a burglar break into your home while you were sleeping? Mm-hmm. Y'all remember me telling y'all this story? Uh, about my brother laying there, he, he had felt like he had just been violated. Laying there asleep. And someone broke into his house. And I don't really know if they had to break in, but they were in his house and, and they stole from him. Mm-hmm. Stole his keys. Stole his TVs. And went on down the road about their business. Mm. Would that get your attention? Would would that cause you to say, I need to lock up my house? I need to watch who I invite into my house? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we invite people into our house and they're sitting there and they're looking around. "Mm, You have nice stuff there, Brian. (laughs) And you come home and your nice stuff is gone. Remember who said that? <laughs> go go visit them. And, yes, no, I, I have one. I had one just like that. Yeah. May I check the serial number? Yeah. <laughs> you may get more attention than you want. <laughs> what about a loved one dying unexpectedly? Mm-hmm. Would that get your attention? Mm-hmm. You know, we've had many people to die in, in our families, people that we, you know, may not be in our immediate family, but we just have been associated with them. Mm-hmm. Our friends, Brother Simmons, dying unexpectedly. Will that get your attention? Now, all the things that, that we're named there, can, can you associate yourself with at least one of them where it has gotten your attention and, and made you perk up and say, I need to do better? Because I have no idea what's going to happen from one moment to the next. Man. James says it best. What is your life? It is but a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. What is he talking about? One moment you're here, the next moment you're gone. Amen. One moment you got this nice fence up in front of your house, the next minute a car crashes through it and comes up into your front door. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it is this very thing in which we're getting ready to look at next. Brother Brian mentioned about the resurrection. In a way, this individual here went through a resurrection. And before he went through this resurrection that he had to go through, something had to get his attention. And that something is being swallowed by a great fish. (laughs) This individual heard the word of the Lord and decided that he wanted to ignore what God told him to do. God didn't have his attention at that time. He didn't have God's interest at heart. He, he wanted to do something different. He, he was like, they're not going to listen. Who are we to say who's not going to listen? Man. The one that didn't listen was the one that was told to go and to preach unto Nineveh. Mm-hmm. That very one by the name of Jonah. Back in 2003, a lady called me up, and, and or I went to visit with her, and she said, oh, are you still preaching? I said, not at this time. And her reply back to me was, well, you know, just take a little time off and, and just relax for a little while because you've been preaching for a long time. No, that wasn't her reply. Her reply was, don't be a Jonah. something I need to be doing? Yes. There was something I needed to be doing. And that was proclaiming the Lord's will, his word. Mm -hmm. Telling people that they need to repent. 
that they need to get their lives together, that they, they need to continue to live faithful unto the Lord. Is this the case? You know, do, do you need to be swallowed by a great fish in order for the Lord to have your attention? For you to do what you're supposed to do? No, because many of us ain't going to get out there in the boat. You don't have to. You don't have to get out there in the boat. You don't have to get out there in the water when you say you can't swim because God will bring the water to you. What are you going to do then? If it just so happened that you wake up and you are in water, oh, you, you're going to do like Jonah. You're going to start crying unto the Lord. You, the fish may not have swallowed you up yet, but, but you find yourself in a situation where you think, just as Jonah saw, here I am in the depths of hell. Crying unto the Lord. Then you need to think to yourself, what did I do to deserve this? It's not what you did, it's what you didn't do. <laughs> the word of the Lord must be taken serious. Yeah. Must Amen. be taken serious, you know. Amen. We asked that question the other day. What does must mean? What does it mean? It means that you have to. You must do this. If I don't, you're the one that's going to have to pay. And so we must take the word of God serious. No matter how dangerous the journey, we, we must go and tell the truth to the world. Amen. Well, what well, you mean to tell me that we are approached with dangers today when, when we preach the word? Yes, we approach with dangers. I remember going and, and, and knocking. Uh, well, I hadn't knocked yet. I didn't have to knock because they was all standing outside. I drive up. I get out. And somebody looked at me. And they looked over here at this person. They looked at me. Say, who is he with? I'm by myself. What do you want? I want to tell you about the Lord. You must be in the wrong place. You must have us mixed up with somebody else. Mm. Here I am standing with, with, with these individuals, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. They, they wasn't people that, that just let anybody come onto their property. They, they had something to hide. They had something that they didn't want anybody to know what they were doing. But, but know this. God sees all. Amen. And God protects Children and fools. I was protected on that day. I had the Lord on my side. I was out doing his will. Understand that no matter how dangerous the journey, we have to do what is right. Amen. Who are we to say that these individuals will not accept the Lord into their lives? Now, I didn't know all of this before I stepped onto the property, but I found out quick. Mm -hmm. I found out real quick. Did that to another house. One man said, I'm not going to go with you. I know, I know who lives over there. He said, I'm not going to go unless you go with me. I said, let's go. And we went together. And we knocked on that door and we talked to those individuals. And they said, we may come. That may has not come yet. Mm -hmm. But the word needs to be spread. Man. Needs to be spread. There's no acceptable excuse. No acceptable excuse. See, we can make excuses for a whole lot of things. But is it really acceptable? You know, when we go back and we think about Moses, all the reasons why he gave to, to, to the Lord now that he could not do what the Lord wanted him to do. A reason is just another word for excuse. Now, how many excuses do you have? Well, I'm looking around the room, and, and I want us to know the old saying is true. Reason, excuses, is just like elbows. Everybody have a couple of them. And we're ready to share them with you. We're ready to give them to you because we do not want to do what is right before God. We should not wonder if, if one, if the ones we preach to will accept it or not. It's not for us to wonder, it's for us to do. Amen. Well, what does the Bible say? One, one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. Amen. We're 
nothing. It's all about God. We're, we're not going and talking to people and telling them, we want you to follow us. We want you to follow the Lord. Paul did say, be imitators of me as I imitate God. Amen. So if we're not imitating God, we should not be trying to convince anybody to follow us. But we need to do what is right before God. What happens when we disobey? What happens? You know, I, I've you know, heard and, and people ask the question, are you giving right? When things don't happen the way that you expect them to happen, when, when your lights get turned off, when your car gets repossessed, or are you, are you giving right? Did you give to the Lord today or this week? Did you do what you were supposed to do? And if you did those things, why are these other things happening? <laughs> well, I, you know, I can lay back sometime and the lights may flicker and the lights may even go out. And I may say, it's not my fault. <laughs> There must be a, 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 a mandatory blackout. And then those phone calls start going in and, and they say, well, it's already been reported. You say, I did pay that bill. <laughs> Not my fault. But when we don't do what is right, we need to ask ourselves, do I deserve this? These things that happened to me in my life, do I deserve them? We all deserve things to happen to us, right? Because God is a gracious God. He, he doesn't give us everything that, 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 well, he gives us things that we don't deserve, and then he's a merciful God, but he don't give us the things that we do deserve. Mm -hmm. But when we're disobedient, we might as well just don't accept what comes out of the way, because we yeah. know that we're wrong. We know. Or we call it in the storm. Or we call it in the storm. See, a lot of times, we don't understand about the storm. We don't understand the storms that come into our lives. And we don't, we don't fully understand that once we get into that storm, that we may never exit that storm. And that could be a good thing. Because if you're not learning while you're in the storm, what good is it going to do you to come out of the storm? Mm. And so here we are. We're caught up in the storm. And here we are. We're still not doing the things that we're supposed to. Our eyes are still not open. So are you caught in the storm? Or are we thrown overboard? You know, again, that, that sea, that water is there. You're the one that was running. You're the one that, that caused the storm. Now here you are being thrown overboard. Did, did you deserve to be thrown overboard? You know, who, who's trying to save you? That, that's the question that, that we need to ask. Ourselves. Who's trying to save us from the wickedness in which we have done or, or, or trying to save us from the hand of God? You know, we can't save anybody from the hand of God because when God says he's going to do something, he has the power to do it. Amen. Amen. He has the power to do it. Amen. Or are we swallowed by life's demands? Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed. You know, we, we think about Jonah. We think about Jonah, you know, getting on that boat. And Jonah, like, I don't have a care in the world. See, we can sleep through just about anything. Mm -hmm. And Jonah was sleeping through that storm. But he woke up. They, they woke him up. And he told them, I'm the reason why this storm is, you know. There's nothing to be proud of, was it? But I'm the reason. Throw me overboard. There he is now swallowed up by this great fish. Great fish. And once that happens, once life has just overtaken us, and we're, we're to the point uh, of despair, do, do we turn to God for help? Do we turn to him for help? You know, a lot of people say, I don't believe in God. Until they find themselves down and out. Till they find themselves in a ditch somewhere. Then they're calling on the Lord. I thought you said you didn't believe in God. Why are you calling on him? I thought you said that you wasn't going to be obedient unto him. Why are you calling on him? Because we need him. We need him. I look toward the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. And so we have to understand that we have to depend upon God and in order to depend upon him. We must listen to him in order for him to come to our need, to come to our aid. We need to listen to him. Amen. And 
do we get the same message as before? You know, I, you know, I told you what to do. <laughs> You're the one that decided that you didn't want to do it. And now you find yourself in a predicament. You find yourself in a situation. Now here is what you need to do. Now that, that I've come and I've gotten you away from the thing in which you have been entrapped in. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to do what I told you to do at first. And Jonah. Jonah did that. What happens when we disobey? Let's look at it. Let's read it. In Jonah chapter 1, in Jonah chapter 1, we find these verses. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. Your evil has come up before me. Hasn't this happened in times past? Mm -hmm. When the wickedness of mankind came up before God. And what did God do? God destroyed the world mm -hmm. because of the wickedness of mankind. Mm -hmm. He could have very well destroyed Nineveh without any questions asked. Mm -hmm. But a lot of answers given. And he says, but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, we already know the answer. <laughs> that we cannot hide from the presence of the, for the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the depths of the sea, you're there. Uh -huh. And on the mountaintop, you're there. Uh -huh. no, no matter where I try to hide, you are there. Amen. You're there everywhere. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and over the unrighteous. Amen. He sees everything. But Jonah, Jonah tried to, to run from the presence of the Lord. Look what it says here. But, but the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. Well, why did he do it upon the sea? Because that's where Jonah was. Jonah had went out to sea. He, he was on his way to Tarshish. The Lord knew exactly where Jonah was. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the, the mariners were afraid and, and he cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that, that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid, laid down and was fast asleep. Fast asleep now. You know, what was he tired? <laughs> what was going on? Was he troubled about something? You know, a lot of people say, oh, you're sleeping so much. What's going on with you? Are you depressed about something? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jonah didn't forget why, why he had went to that ship. I'm pretty sure he was still in his mind that I'm here because I did not want to go to where the Lord wanted me to go. But here he is, fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? <laughs> Arise, call on your God. For perhaps the God, uh, the, the, the God will give a thought to the, to us that we may not perish. Now, God has many ways in, in getting the attention of many different people. Amen. Amen. And, and as they they went in and they talked to Jonah here and telling Jonah to call upon his God. They had no idea that the God that Jonah was going to call upon in, in, in due time was the God of creation. Mm -hmm. Because the gods that they were calling on couldn't do nothing. Amen. And it shows right here that their gods could not do nothing. So maybe, just maybe, the God that this man served can. <laughs> not if it's a God like they were thinking. That God wouldn't have been able to do anything. 
Now, I want you to look at that, and I want you to look at it very carefully because when, when they said call upon your God, it was a lowercase g. It didn't say call upon God Almighty. Call upon your God. And it says there in verse 7, we're going to read a little bit more. And they said to one another, come, let, let us cast lots that we may know on, on whose account the evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. <laughs> Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? <laughs> and, and what do you and where do you come from? See, they didn't know Jonah. They didn't, he paid his fare and they was taking him where he wanted to go. Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And I know, uh, and of what people are you? Who are you? And now they want to get to know him. Hmm. Uh, all these troubles. They want to get to know exactly who he is, what is causing this thing. And here's what Jonah says. I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who, who made the sea and the dry land. That's who I am. Yeah. Now, here, here's, here's the way people are. Hmm. You're in trouble because we're in trouble. Hmm. You're telling us who you are, and you're telling us you are the reason why we're in trouble. But look at the people. Look, look at their attitude. It is said, then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, what is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. He told them. I'm the reason mm -hmm. that the sea is in such a rage. I'm the reason why you have thrown over your cargo. I'm the reason why these things are happening. And then they said to him, well, what shall we do to you? You know, that question is asked in the New Testament, isn't it? What, what shall we do? Sirs, what, what must we do? Lord, what do you want me to do? But it's asked a little bit different here. What shall we do to you? <laughs> what shall we do to you? You know, that's a good question. When someone comes to us and, and they're asking for help, and, and, we, and we reply back to them, what do you want me to do for you? What, what can I do in order to help you? What can we do? What can we do? I believe that as Jonah is contemplating his life, contemplating the things that God said to him. And the things in which these individuals are looking at and, and they're asking this question, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? But the sea grew more and more temperous. It grew. It's raging now. It's a mad. It's like, a, it's like that perfect storm. You, you ever heard of the perfect storm where, where all of these things come together and this storm has formed and is the perfect storm. That a storm that can destroy anything and everything that's in his path. He says here in verse 12, he said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. Not for me, but for you to see what quiet down. For well, I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, now, now this is where people are because people care for people. <laughs> Nevertheless, the men rolled hard to get back to dry land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more temperous and, and against them. Therefore, they called out to the Lord, not their gods any longer, but they cried, called out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us 
innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea. <laughs> and the sea ceased from his raging. Amen. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly that they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. <clears throat> what, what needs to happen to get your attention? <laughs> See here, God wanted the attention of Jonah. He wanted Jonah to be obedient unto him. But he also, it's twofold, he also got the attention of these marinas who did not believe in him and did not cry unto him until this matter came about. Amen. Here they are crying to God Almighty. And here's the Lord saving Jonah from drowning in the depths of the sea as we need to be saved today. Amen. From drowning in the things in which we have got ourselves connected to. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Three days and three nights in the belly of that great fish. He appointed this fish. Yeah, that, that fish could have been going anywhere it wanted to go, right? <laughs> but no, you need to go that direction because there's somebody over there that needs that need to be swallowed. <laughs> Jonah was that person but here Jonah is now in, in the belly of this fish and he's praying to the Lord and Jonah's prayer he prayed to the Lord saying I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol I cried and you heard my voice she so said, God can hear us from wherever we are. Amen. Amen. You, know, you know what he wants for us to do? He wants for us to cry to him. He wants for us to call out to him. He wants us to do the right thing. And a lot of times that cry needs to be a cry of repentance. Mm. And he says, for you cast me into the deep in the heart of the sea. And the flood surrounded me. Did God do that? Or did those marinas cast him over? It was because of the Lord that they did it. Amen. It was because of Jonah that they did it. And God again did what he wanted to do. He says in verse 4, Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head and the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Jonah thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. Thought that was the end of his life. And here he is crawling, uh, calling out of the belly of this great fish unto the Lord. And the Lord is listening to Jonah. Verse 6 or verse 7. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayers came to you into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I... With the voice of thanksgiving, with sacrifice to you, what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. Man. Vomited Jonah out on dry land. Now I want you to think about that just for a moment. Jonah says something that many people say today when they find themselves in a situation and they say, Lord, if you'll let me get out of this situation, I will serve you. <laughs> Jonah says, what I have vowed I will pay. <laughs> just rescue me. Get me out of the belly of this fish because the things that are here, I is uncomfortable. It's unbearing. Get me out of here. And he got out, but probably wasn't a pretty picture. <laughs> the great fish vomited him up on dry land. Not in the midst of the sea, but on dry land. 
Because God spoke to that fish and told that fish what to do. And then we find the preaching of the word causes results. Well, no matter what we think, the preaching of God's word causes results. Is he going to do one or two things? Is he going to draw people to him or is he going to drive people away from him? Man. 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 In Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. Well, first off, let us remember that this message that Jonah was supposed to, pre to preach, it didn't change. <laughs> The very thing in which God told Jonah to do, God told him to do again. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it. The message that I tell you. So what did Jonah do? Jonah did what God says. It says there in verse 4, Yet forty days Nineveh shall be overthrown. And here Jonah is going through this city. And before he could get to the other end of the city, going through it, here he is calling this message out. And he says, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast. They put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Mm -hmm. It's this message. This message of God that individuals here would cause them to change their lives for the better. Man. We need to accept it. Those of us that have accepted it, we need to preach it. We need to teach people the truth. We need to tell people Amen. what they need to do because these things were important. Amen. There we find after these things were, were taking place and here they are in sackcloth, there's things that still need to be done. It says in verse 6, the word reached the king of Nineveh and he, uh, he arose from his throne, removed his robe covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Hmm. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles let neither man nor beast nor a herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to God. Amen. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from, his, and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? Hmm. God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. Who knows? Hmm. No one knows but God. Amen. And when God knows he only reveals to those th those things that he wants to be revealed to man. Man, but Nineveh repented. Mm -hmm. Nineveh did what was right. And here's what we need to realize: when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that He had said He would do to it, and He did not do it. He did not do it. What has God not done to you hmm. that you thought needed to be done to well. you? Because you changed. And so let's not hold the gospel message back from anybody. Let's share it with mankind, those that we meet in grocery stores, those that we meet in the mall, those that we meet on the street corners. Let us share the word of God with them on our jobs. Let's be very careful. But yet, let's still share the word of God with them. Mm -hmm. They can see the Lord by looking at us. Amen. By the things that we do, by the things that we say. Let them ask the question, what must I do? Mm -hmm. Not to you, but what must I do in order to be saved like you? If you're here this morning, you're not a child of God, and you need to get your life right with God, do so. Do so by coming forth, making the confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, being immersed in the water of very baptism, added by the Lord Himself, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 47, praising God and having faith with all the people. The Lord adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're here and you're straight away from the fold. We want you to come back. We, we want you to make a confession. If you have to go get your life right with somebody, go get it right with him and come back and get it right with the Lord. Amen. Do those things, for this is pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. If you're here in your subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn.
Yeah.